Every year, our lab puts on a little design competition called Masterpiece Mania. This year's entries included a coil gun, artificial intelligence, a robot, and a toaster. A freaking toaster! Anyway, hopefully you'll find one or more of these projects as interesting as I have. For your convenience, I've cataloged them and included timestamps for each project so that you can watch as many or as few as you like. First to present is Colin Jendreski with his tripod mounted coil gun. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Colin Jendreski. Um, I am a first year sophomore EE and uh, this is my coil gun. Uh, the first thing that I would like to talk about is the hardware. Uh, the coil gun uh, utilizes a 200 amp, 1000 volt rated SCR. The power supply is a 450 volt self-wound transformer. Uh, the transformer was wound from a microwave oven transformer. Uh, the light bulb on the side here is a 60 watt light bulb. Right here. Um, that's going to basically meter the current to the capacitor bank so I don't end up uh, frying any relays uh, from the Raspberry Pi. Projectile that I'm using is a 5 16 inch uh, steel projectile. It's about 2 inches long. Um, let's see, the coil is a two-stage uh, two coil. Um, they are in series. Um, and the resistance of the coils is about approximately one ohm. Without further ado, I think I will uh, charge the capacitor bank. Um, so here we go. It's just going to take a minute. Okay, yep, so it looks like it's going to work this time, so. Go ahead and fire it. It'll do a four count like you saw before and then it'll fire. So, firing in four, three, two, one. There it is. Next is Kevin Coda with Karen, the Morning Helper Artificial Intelligence. And this is my voice assistant AI smart mirror um, with home automation. Um, so, it is a smart mirror. I like to call it more of an AI because it is, and that's more of the part that I worked on. However, it is a big hardware problem. Uh, I did a lot of software. So it uses machine learning and neural networks um, to train data into her to learn her name. Good morning. Hi, Kevin. The time is 6.20 p.m. So she'll go through that, and this is my daily morning schedule. So she'll tell me my schedule, the weather, and things like that. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's 36. So she has access to all my Google accounts. She, I, she's linked to my Google accounts, and that's actually how she's getting her responses. Her responses fluctuate between Google's responses and Alexa's responses. And that's part of the convolutional neural network that I've built. Um, so I can go in and train which responses I like better, and then re-upload it right to the Raspberry Pi that's in here using, like, using Python files. Never mind. Here's the latest news. Oh, she'll go through and read the news. Um, so also, the phrases I've trained in there are Alexa. Alexa, hey Google, stop. Uh, <laughs> always a helpful one. Um, you, so can't, you can't do that with your wife, can you? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> on top of all this, I have an app for the smart mirror. As you can see, there's not much on there, but the app that I built, um, if I can get it to turn, is a custom-built app uh, written in JavaScript. It uses a website. Um, so I'm able to add other modules. So if you can take a look at the screen, I'm able to add my calendar, which is right there. Um, right to the right to the app. I can add uh, my email under under that. I can add uh, good luck at masterpiece mania as a as a compliment. Turn on kitchen lights. So she'll say, uh, turning on turn kitchen on lights. Kitchen lights. And then the Mine's kitchen light. Muted. The kitchen lights will turn on just like that. That is over Wi-Fi. So that's 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi with my own custom built module that has an Arduino, a Wi-Fi chip, and two relays. Um, in back in the back of uh, Karen. You can see my uh, Raspberry Pi, my Arduino, and my 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi chip is lost. That's right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead. So what's the, what's the display technology there? Uh, it's, just, it's a monitor, computer monitor. 
Um, but the screen is, uh, I actually installed that today because uh, my other one cracked. Um, so it's kind of wavy, but it's a 80% 80, uh, 80 light proof, uh, light reflective uh, material. So it reflects 80% of light and allows 10% through, or 20% through. Um, all this code was actually written in a week. Um, I snapped my SD card and my Raspberry Pi and lost all my stuff over spring break. Um, so this is the best I could get to now. Uh, so I haven't had two years of data trained into it. It was really good until spring break. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of networked appliances, Peter Zhu designed a clock that can tell both the time and the weather from scratch. This is his weather clock. Hello, I'm Peter. I'm electrical engineer. Nice to see you. Um, this is the weather clock. So why I built this is because in the morning I go to the bathroom. I really want to know what's the weather outside, what's the temperature outside, if it's cold or not. So I don't always remember to bring my... Excuse me, it, yeah. it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how cold it is. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> So I built this. It's a clock. Um, just power it on. It shows you the time and the temperature of both currently. Like that. And it has Wi-Fi built into it. It synced the time over the internet, so it knows. Uh, so the time is accurate every t uh, every time you see it. And the weather data was pulled from the internet too. That's Celsius, by the way. Um, yeah, that's everything I need to show. You make the case? Yeah, I 3D printed this case. Okay. So uh, I can't open it actually. It's just everything. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. <laughs> well, okay. Next on Death of, I mean, uh, next to present is Philips Munter, who's the world's greatest player of an instrument that he invented. Prepare to have your ears accosted by the electric flute. Can you say who you are oh, first? Yeah. I'm Philips Munter. Yeah. I'm a third year electrical engineering student. Um, I've been working on this for a year. Um, the, original, the first iteration was using 555 timers to generate the tones but I then switched over to an Arduino so that I'd have a far wider range. So. Um, to, to turn it on, you blow into the top um, to, sense, to sense the air pressure. At first I had used a switch which was activated by a flap but that was, you had to blow exceedingly hard to activate it, so I then switched over to using a small motor about, uh, I think it's four millimeters in diameter, with a fan on it. Uh, and that generates just enough voltage when you blow into the fan uh, that the Arduino is able to detect it. Did you mimic the, uh, the button pushing on a real flu? I did not actually mimic the button pushing. What I did instead is I, uh, you do the fingerings in a binary pattern, so it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, on until 128 or whatever. Very easy to implement in the code. So I, I took the, I put all the buttons into one port, one GPIO port, and then I took, and then I read from that port what number it was, and used an algorithm, just a short math equation convert that into the corresponding MIDI note. Um, since I only finished it recently, I'm not very good at playing it yet, but I think I can make some tunes. <laughs> Since they don't really introduce themselves, I'll introduce them. This is the Keweenaw Rocket Range Group, a team that designs, builds, and tests high-altitude rockets. Their entry into this competition is their environmental sensor package. 
Uh, this is our uh, environmental payload package for our upcoming rocketry competition in Mexico. What what is it for? So the competition, like I said, it's a specialized payload that we have to get the rocket up to a 10,000 foot altitude. And then uh, on the way up and down, we will be recording uh, data, uh, data from sensors that David will talk about. And not only will we be writing it onto a local SD card, but also we'll be streaming it down over uh, radio. As you can see, we have a perforated full of sensors. We have in the middle here a Teensy, it's called, and that is a Arduino compatible. It's very similar, but faster, has an integrated clock and an integrated SD card slot, so it fit our needs much better. We had originally built this to Arduino, and it took most of the pins in the Arduino just to get the time and SD logging. So this is more efficient for our needs. We also have over here a MPU 6050, that is an accelerometer, gyroscope, and thermometer all combined into one. That shares with a BME 6868 here. That is an environmental sensor that has uh, volatile organic detection via a. Uh, it's a, like a very it's specialized a, sensor. A heater that uh, makes the gases basically condense onto it, and then it measures the voltage drop across that to measure resistance. And then it has a thermometer, humidity sensor, pressure sensor. It's a pretty slick little environmental sensor. We have a GPS up here. That is the Adafruit Ultimate V3 GPS. That's very accurate, down to about five meters. Not accurate in here because we are currently surrounded by basically a Faraday cage. So I'm getting no signal. We also have a uh, Arduino Nano that takes the data from the uh, uh, TNC and sends it to our antenna. The data, this is our debugging mode. So you can see it's logging pretty often, not quite as often as I'd like to, but we're working on that. It has all the data from the BME 680 displayed right here, all the acceleration data, temperature, gyroscopic data, and again the GPS with nothing displayed. Next is Kenny Shivers, who is sick of how expensive PlayStation controllers are, so he built one himself specifically for fighting games. This is his Hitbox controller. So I guess actually next to me with, I guess, it's a fancy controller for like a PlayStation, I guess is one way to put it. Um, so, hello, I'm Kenny. I'm a second year here. I'm an electrical computer engineering student. So, basically, I play a lot of fighting games, you know, stuff like Street Fighter or Tekken, you've heard of those. And so, those are generally played in an arcade with, you know, like a full arcade stick setup. There's the joystick on one side and your A button on the other side. So, in arcade machines, the joystick is only digital. It only has the nine states of neutral, and then you can get your eight directionals with your buttons. So, normally I play on a computer, and so I'm playing on a keyboard, which, you know, you can kind of replicate everything with. But if I ever wanted to play on a PS4, generically, the fight sticks you would have to buy, the fight sticks are on the order of $200. They're kind of expensive. And so, there's a lot cheaper ways to build that. So, the total project cost for this was around $40. The only expensive thing, or the entire expense was this little board in here, which just converts your digital inputs to be able to go to a PS4 without the PS4 getting angry at you. So the buttons were from a, P or a mechanical keyboard I had lying around that I was able to disassemble and just, you know, take apart some screws, desolder some stuff. You can get the key switches out. So I could take off the keycap and show you. Underneath, it's just a simple switch. So, and then as well, I needed square holes cut into some wood that was, you know, kind of free wood that I had lying around the actual Wii lab. So I don't have an easy way to cut square holes. So instead, I built circle holes and 3D printed these little pink inserts that you can kind of see from this side as well. So you know you can push down as hard as you want. It's not going to go through because you know it's just 3D printed material. On PC it works, and it's registered as a PS4 controller. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. All right. Technically, I entered my Tesla coil into this competition also, but since there is an entire video devoted to it, <coughs> we'll skip headlong into the next final project. Inching us ever closer to the inevitable robot uprising, Josh Grogi shows off his quadruped robot. I'm Joshua Grogi, I'm a fourth year electrical engineering student. Um, my project is this, which is a quadruped controlled by Arduino and um, mechanically by um, 12 little hobby servos. I thought it'd be really, I've seen these around and I thought it'd be really cool to, incorporate, to have a sort of 
mechanism that incorporated an electrical um, control system and programming as well as mechanical means of moving around and the um, really interesting um, requirements for programming 12 different servos. So go ahead and this demonstrator here, I have a simple program set up on it. So I have it try to walk a couple steps and then sort of stand and wave at you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but I had to go into in the programming side of it, I had to go in and say I want to, for the ease of telling it to walk or telling it to do something, I set up the program so that I could do relative distances. So from where you're at or from a center point, go this many degrees this way or this many degrees that way. So that I could have the arm, the legs mm -hmm. walk forward or have it stand up. It does act many times like a spider. Um, there's an interesting time, because I have there when I'm programming it, I have it plugged in to via micro USB to a computer and such. And so there is power that's thrown through the Arduino and also to the servo. So if I don't have the battery plugged in, it'll sort of sit there and jitter and try to move and usually sort of like clams up like a dead spider and it's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Josh. I look forward to seeing that in my night muse. Finally, built 15 minutes before the competition, John Fritz presents a toaster. <sighs> John. I'm John Fritz. I'm a third year computer engineering student. I built this because I wanted to have like a miniature toaster oven because I can. Mostly as a novelty item, but uh, it should theoretically be eating flesh now. And yeah, it does work. <coughs> So basically, it's a basic, mm -hmm. I put the heating element from the toaster in there, and yeah. Sorry. If you if you kind of point it up, the, you, everybody can see the glowing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it does work. And it will toast. And it will if I wait long enough. Just barely. Be Are you able trying to, make. to bribe the judges? With pizza? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've never actually tested it before after building it, so this is really. A first test, also. So, what's what's interesting about the design of it? Uh, um, what is the what is the design elements? No one is making toaster ovens this small, and it's uh, portable. It could be battery powered if you wanted to. Um, I think overall, more it's more of a novelty. I know. I think more of the electronic design. What 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 makes it work? It's just a heating element from a toaster. A what? A heating element from a toaster. It's just micro like wiring wrapped on a board. Okay. Yeah. The front of it, it's called the back. Pardon? Oh, they're actually going to the side of it. Oh. Um, there's like an inner chamber of sorts that's the actual toaster that I built using oh, the okay. steel from the toaster and JD Weld, which is food Sorry. safe, I checked. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yep. <laughs> that concludes all of the projects. Now we get to hear the judges' choices for the top three entries. But since we were lucky enough to have the department chair here, <laughs> We decided to award two third prizes. And so, for third prize, we're going to give one of them to uh, Philip with the electric flute. <laughs> if, you ever, if you ever heard Dan play the piano, it's really, really good. So, you got the musician and then you got the astronomer, so good choice. <laughs> um, and we're also going to award a third place to the, elect the weather clock. So uh, Peter? Peter? Peter. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Now, um, for uh, second prize, um, again, every I, things were things were good, but we decided to go with uh, Josh and the quadruped robot. And for the grand prize this time. I just can't imagine how much work that thing took, but we're going to award that to Kevin with the smart mirror. Very cool for everybody who participated in this year's Masterpiece Mania. I enjoyed everybody's projects, and I hope you viewers at home found at least one of them to be interesting also. Thank you for watching. Um, which project is your favorite? Comment below. Also, subscribe for new videos every month, apparently.